I bet you can hear every single note that's left in that solo in your head. And that's the freaking awesome sign that you're onto something and you're hitting those chord changes just and it doesn't help to be Hendrix. I mean, it doesn't hurt. I should, it doesn't help. It helps to be Hendrix, but it doesn't hurt to be able to play like him. Okay, so welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Brett Papa, and today we are gonna go over something that seemed to have a great effect on a lot of people. Last lesson, I did a, you know, what makes this solo sound so good? The Gilmore effect, basically. And what we did was we analyzed why did that first solo and the second one for that matter, but especially the first solo in Comfortably Numb, why does it sound so good? So it all stemmed from my buddy David, who was asking me, I know the scales and I know the cage system, but I still didn't understand how to make melodies. So what I thought was, why don't we use iconic guitar solos and we'll take those two things and we'll break them down and explain why they played what they played and why it works. Now, this isn't saying that this is, you know, how they came up with the solo. This is just the explanation on why it works so that us as students of music can understand, you know, why does that sound so good? Why does Hotel California sound so good? Why does Badge or any of these iconic, you know, shook me all night long, why do these solos work? Why do those notes sound so good? And by analyzing what others have done, especially if you've learned all those solos, you can now understand why those solos work and how to start to create melodies and solos like that on your own. All right, so welcome, welcome, welcome. If it's your first time here, make sure to subscribe and click the bell also down below for everybody out there, I'm going to leave a completely free soloing course that really goes over this kind of thing in depth and also how to add feel, timing, phrasing, all that kind of stuff. It's called Fretboard Command and it's down below and it's free for you. So make sure you check that out. Okay, Hendrix. A lot of the awesome songs are tuned down a half step. I'm not gonna do that for this lesson just because then everybody have to tune their guitar down. But if you wanna learn and play along with the album you actually need to tune down a half step and it just sounds better there anyways it's my favorite tuning ever and then since everybody also always asks what am i using for tone nash strat imperial low wind special nash specials i think is what they're called single coils divided by 13 btr 23 and then i'm going into an echoplex pedal from dunlop or mxr into an archer for a little bit of a boost just adds like that's without that's with so just a little extra on the top and that is an archer but the jeff beck modded version which in my opinion is the best archer ever okay so this solo let's go over the chord progression right so we got e minor to start with g A minor, E minor, B minor, cool little walk down to A minor, to C, G, F, C, D. Okay, so all together again, E minor. G. A minor. E minor. B minor. A minor. C. G. Okay, so, solo starts like. Okay, so let's just take that. 
Why does that sound good? You're playing over an E minor chord at that point, and let's just say we're gonna use E minor pentatonic, right? And then position two out of that. Okay, those are the two shapes we're gonna work out of right now. So over that E minor chord, why does that note work? Okay, that note works because you're actually bending into an E note. So of course that's gonna sound good over an E minor chord, right? The E minor chord, the note you're bending to is from this E minor chord right here. It's that D minor shape. So in reality, any of those notes would've worked. Any of that kind of stuff would work because you're playing right out of this chord shape. So you got. Now when he goes down to that note, that note also works and it's out of this chord shape. Okay, so you're now in position one of E minor pentatonic, right? So. That note is the fifth of the chord, okay? And so that's why that note sounds awesome. Now you got, so you got, now, those two notes work great because you're going into the G chord. So when you, it's not quite there yet, and then right there, you're landing squarely into G. Now check this out. You have a G chord here, and you have a G chord here. Both which, that works. That's the fifth, and then that's the third of this chord. All right, so you got. Now this next lick, Definitely gonna work over a G chord because again, you've hit two of the notes from the chord, right? You went that note and then that note. I mean, you can't go wrong over a G chord hitting the G note. So this bent and released into the fifth of the chord, that hits your one of the chord or your root. Now, at that point, you're coming in in this A minor, right? So dropping in right there, you're hitting the note from an A minor chord, right? Now it's still going over that A minor chord and these still sound good, even though they're not chord tones specifically, right? So you don't always have to hit the chord tone, although he is releasing into that note. So when he goes, Right, that note right there again is from the A, so it's enough of a like, oh, there's an A note, Whoosh, sounds good, right? So, now that, when you go, now you're dropping back into that E minor chord, right? So you've gone E minor. Okay, so all of that stuff, right? This. Why does that sound good over that E minor chord, okay? So when you bend that note up, playing out of that E minor chord shape again, we went over in the beginning. That note, straight from this E minor chord. That note is your E note, so. Again, all that is straight out of this E minor chord. Okay, now at this point, we're coming up to where that, 
B minor walk down to A minor to C all happens, okay? So, E minor. G. And then A minor. E minor. All that happens over this. Okay, and when you think about it, right, you're hitting the notes from the A minor chord and the B minor chord, right? So that all works great. Or, Okay, now this. Why does all that work? That's over the C chord, basically. And when you think about it, you've got a C here. Okay, so. And you're playing right out of that C chord. That bending of that note you're hitting the third of that C chord, okay? And then you're gonna come into the L. Right? Now this part, when you go to the G, you're playing out of E minor pentatonic, but it's also G major pentatonic. Now when you do this, right, that next part, All that stuff is you're starting to play to the chords key, okay? And what I mean by that is when you go, okay, that is bending up into the third of the G, and then you're hitting the root of the G. And then you basically got it. Okay, now when you do that, think about these two notes right here that you slid down to. That's right out of the F chord. And when you bend this note up, you're basically bending into an F chord. Okay, so you got G chord. Okay, now the next two chords, you got C. Okay, so you got, and you're skipping over the B string, right? So you're bending up G12, or G14 rather. Slide that whole shape down and then go 13, 13, and bend that up so you're catching the third of that F, and then hit it again, right? Now this next part, I think it does that. <laughs> Something like that, right? So maybe it's a... Uh... There's two ways you can do it. You can outline the C chord here and go... Okay, so that would be uh, seven and eight on the G and the B in your... Basically hammering into the third of the C chord and hitting the root. Or you can do that same thing here if your hands aren't as big and you can't get to that stretch. So check it out. Your there's that C note right there, right? And then that next one is sliding into that D note, right? Now on the D, you basically grab the fifth of the D chord and you're basically turning it into a suspended chord, right? So that's the third of the D. And then 
So. Okay, and then from that point, you go into the second round. And the second round is really similar to the first round, right? There's a few little tweaks in the solo. What I recommend is I was able to find the solo on its own, an isolated track, and you can really hear what's going on. Now, again, I, I may not hit every note perfect, but that's not what this is about, right? If you wanna learn that, I've got a lesson on the video anyways, or the song, I should say. So this is more just an explanation of why the notes, you know, or thereabouts work. Okay, so for round two, it's really kind of the same thing as the first solo with a couple of exceptions, right? It comes in, it's like a... <laughs> So, I mean, that's basically the same solo. You come in, same thing over the E. And then he just adds in a different lick. Now when you go. And then. Again, that same thing. All right? So, same kind of solo. That's basically what it is, something like that. Again, if you want to check it out, go check out the isolated track and see if you can figure it out, right? You kind of know the chord shapes he's playing out of. You know the scale he's playing out of. And heck, why not even just go through and see if you can use those ideas and the principles and come up with your own solo, right? That's half the fun. Once you learn to improvise and see kind of what they're doing, you can modify and tweak it in your own way. So again, a quick recap. What we're gonna do is over that E chord, I'll give you a couple of options for each chord to think about, right? Over the E minor chord, you have here and here. Okay, G chord. You can play here, here, right? so similar, right? I mean, basically one note difference. You have or, all right, that's the E minor chord. You drop that one note, now you got a G. This, this part right here can basically work for the E minor chord and then you gotta drop that note for it to work for the G. Only difference, right? Now, when it comes to that A minor chord, you can do a couple of things. You can play right here. You can go up to the A minor here. Or there's also an A minor, uh, you can play that A minor chord here. So, right, and you can drop down to, right, you can go, it'd be a, right, you can play it there. So you got A minor here, A minor here, or A minor here. E minor chord, right, you can play, Right there, you can play here. Or you can play here. Now, when you get to that B, you can... Right, those two notes are right out of that B minor chord. Now this note you could use too, but it's jumping out of pentatonic. Back to that A minor, right? Now you could also use this note in the A minor chord. It's not in the pentatonic, 
But that doesn't mean you can't use it because it's in that chord. Right? Now when you get to the C, you can use this C or here. Now when you go to the G, right? So you got, you can turn this E minor pentatonic into the major. And just got to resolve to the front side of the chord. Or bend into the back side. Drop down to what would be D minor pentatonic or F major pentatonic. And you can play that chord here. Coming up on that C. To do those double stops, you can work out of that shape. Or here. Or. And then just scoot everything up to do the. Or. Or. All right, so that's basically, you know, I mean, there may be a missed note here or there, but that's basically the genesis and, and, and the notes and why they work. You know, you can, the genesis meaning, you can see those chords inside the scale. That's a starting point for you to solo, right? Learn the solo, maybe note for note, listen to it again. There's an isolated, killer isolated track of just the solo. So you can figure that out. But then again, go through and analyze why it all works and then see if you can create your own melodies. Take, you know, 75% uh, of the solo and do it that same way and modify that last 25% in your own way. Or since you know how it works, now go check out the John Mayer way or the Stevie Ray Vaughan way of playing it and see what they did and see if you can analyze, oh, okay, here's what they are doing. Playing out of those same chord shapes or scale shapes, but maybe they change the notes around and it still sounds amazing. So if you guys want an iconic solo broken down, again, leave it in the comment section below. No, like 30 minute solos, I don't have time to do that. But if it's like, you know, a good 15 to 30 second solo that really is just memorable and you gotta know, why it's working. Leave it in the comment section below and I'll see if I can get to it. I'm gonna to try to make this into a series. There's gonna be many more Hendrix examples of this. Lots of great Clapton stuff and Gilmore stuff obviously coming that way too. I've been thinking about some ACDC, but what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comment section below. And then if you're new here, make sure to subscribe, click the bell to be notified when the newest videos come out. And also everything you see here, whether it's me, or the guests I bring in here, it's all made possible by your support at brettpapa.com. I got a membership there that's got 700 videos to help you get better on guitar, plus you get 25% off anything I do with any other featured instructor on the site. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for your continued support. We'll catch you next time.